Hey guys, welcome to another video from Skinny Mech. In this video, we're going to talk about the All American Steam Sterilizer. Kind of looks like a canner, but it's a little bit different. You've been playing with it, so we're going to let her do the video. So, I recently got the All American Pressure Canner that I've been learning how to use, and now have the Steam Pressure Sterilizer. It definitely looks different starting with this. Don't have that on the pressure canner. All right, so this is a big difference in it. This is the pressure valve for the steam pressurizer. Whereas a canner has the weighted that goes on it. And with the steam sterilizer, you also have a inner pot and an outer pot. You have to use distilled water in here. I was reading in the instructions and if you do not have distilled water, you can use other water. They just recommend that you clean it more. So if you have access to distilled water, that's what you're supposed to use. We do keep distilled water for several different things. So I always have some on hand, but in a grid down situation, you could make use whatever water you had. You just would need to clean this good because you could get like um, iron buildup and minerals from the water. And just like with the pressure canner, the All American does not have rubber seals that you have to worry about, but you do have to make sure that you lubricate on the, on the top edge here. So I will use olive oil usually on my pressure canner for the sterilizer they recommend a vacuum grease or petroleum jelly which we keep on hand they also recommend that you do this while it's um cool easier to put on it doesn't not going to slide everywhere so you need to make sure that you just lubricate all around here because that keeps your steam from escaping so then you don't have to worry about the rubber seals wearing out you just have to make sure you have something to lubricate with and i imagine in an emergency situation if you don't have this any kind of cooking oil may work just as well with this that might be something to look into as that's what i use on the pressure canner all right so holding this nice big heavy pot here for y'all there's a water line that is etched in here machine etched that you can see and feel that is where you put the distilled water up to in the bottom of it Okay, that was about a half a jug that I already had opened and it looks like that is right to my watermark. So this is the inner pot or the inner chamber and this is also the rack that goes in the bottom. When you put it in, make sure that the lip goes down because that allows for there to be some air circulating underneath. So we're gonna put that in. You can also put a towel in before you lay something on it. There's also bags you can get for um, sterilizing. So we don't have those bags. So I'm gonna put a towel in here and I'm gonna put the items on it. Let's see. Cause you can lay the towel on them to help with any excess moisture that might be in there. So we have some random items that I borrowed from Skinny Medic that we are going to sterilize. So I'm gonna lay them down in here and spread them out a little bit. I was trying to read different items that you could sterilize and it said a lot of like vets would need things, tattoo artists do a lot of sterilizing, obviously doctors and nurses use sterilization dentist's office have to sterilize you would probably want to get the plastic bags that are made for sterilizing things because i would imagine you would want to prevent rust from the moisture that we create in here from the steam so 
we're not too worried about that now as we're just learning this process and sharing what we learn. So I'm just gonna lay the towel on there to help with absorbing the moisture. All right, so we're gonna put this in next. You wanna make sure that this channel goes on the right side. And as you can see here, there's a little etching. This is where the front lines up with the arrow to close it. So this helps you know where to put things. So this is gonna go on the right side. Let's sit that down in there and you can see where it's sitting on the distilled water. All right, and we're gonna make sure this is down in there and there's little metal hooks here so you can see where this lines up the arrow is here there's one of these on the back as well you then want to make sure that you are fairly even on your spacing so like here it's a little more small of a space versus over here it's a larger space so you want to try to adjust that to get it as even as you can get so that way you're not losing any steam anywhere and then just like with the pressure canner, you want to do two at a time, the ones across from each other. So I'm gonna tighten those. I'm gonna do these ones here, and I'm just barely tightening them right now, just to make sure that I, everything looks even, and then I'll go back and tighten them some more. So my spacing looks fairly close all around. So then I will tighten the opposite wing nuts at the same time to make sure that it's all staying even. If you try to tighten one at a time, you're gonna end up with your lid all cattywampus and not have a fairly even space. All right, so we have everything ready to go here. We are gonna turn our burner on high. All right, so I have turned my heat source on. While I'm talking about heat source, I do wanna point out that I was reading it said you do not want to use these on a glass top stove. So if you have a glass top stove, I would recommend getting some kind of outdoor burner that you could use on a propane, with a propane tank, because the weight of these could crack your glass top stove. So we've turned it on high. It's gonna take about 30 minutes for it to start building up steam. This is in the open position right now. This is closed, this is open. I have to have steam coming out of here for five minutes before I close it, and then I'll watch this get up to green, which is has to be like 17 to 20 pounds of pressure. When it hits the green, I will then open this back up to release the steam. It takes about three to five more minutes and then close it again. That's just to ensure that there is no air in there that's circulating that isn't steamy is my understanding. That is just making sure that everything in there is acclimating and that the steam is being effective. So once I've gone through that process, then I can close it back and let the steam build up in there. I've got some steam coming out here. So I'm gonna track this for five minutes. And it's been five minutes that the steam is still building, so I'm gonna close this. And then I'm gonna wait and watch this let it build up to in the green. And I had this because it's hot. Um, let it build up to the green and then we will release another three to five minutes. We'll open it to release it and then we will close again just to make sure there's no trapped air in there. And that way it's the actual steam that is in the sterilizer. So we've been watching our pressure and we've been holding at 15 pounds for a bit. But if you can see, we're losing some steam in some very places. So for some reason, we did not get a good seal. I had this happen once with canning and it was just a teeny little spot that would occasionally lose pressure, lose some, some the steam out, but it was not preventing this from being where it needed to be. So it wasn't a big deal. But with this, I've been watching and we've been stuck at 15 for a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this back off I'm gonna let the pressure out and let it get back to zero, and then I'm gonna start the process again and see if I can't get a better seal. All right, I'm gonna try this again. All right. Release the steam, the pressure off, and 
let it cool, opened it up, and cleaned the edge and reapplied. So I also added more distilled water because some of it had gone down from the steam it had created, so I added back up to the water line before we started again to make sure we had enough. So we reach pressure, releasing for three to five minutes. It's noisy. Okay, so it's been venting for about four minutes now. And if you can see on here, we have gone, we were up in the green. We are not back down to zero. And that was it says three to five minutes, so I'm about the five minute mark, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this back. And we will now start building pressure back up. Once we get pressure back up, we are in the sterilization zone. That, doing that twice just allows to make sure that there is no air trapped in there that would prevent the sterilization from happening. All right, so we are back up to pressure. I'm going to turn it down a little. I have learned from canning that I can maintain pressure pretty good at about medium. So now we're going to set the timer for 35 minutes and I'll just keep an eye on that to make sure it stays between 17 and 20 and you need at least 35 minutes to get a good sterilization. And then we will cut the heat off and we will let the steam out. All right, so we have gone our 35 minutes. We are going to turn this off, and then I'm going to get my hot holder and let this steam off. You can see the pressure is releasing very quickly. This process is definitely much faster than letting the pressure come down from pressure canning. It takes a while when you turn off the heat because there's not a, a thing like this to open it. It's so it does not let the steam, you have to actually let it completely cool down, then take the weight off of a pressure canner. So there's several differences in these, which is why you cannot can in these. But we're now down at zero pressure, so I'm going to I'm going to use two of these just in case. Everything is hot. And you can see there's still a teeny bit coming out right there. But I'm not going to pull the lid open. And always do opposites when you're unscrewing. Just like when you screw them on. I'm gonna get my gloves and then we'll open it up in just a minute. All right, got my stuff ready over here and I have given this a few more minutes. All right, and these get stuck sometime, but I've learned a trick. This has not happened with my canner, but it can happen. That's all you have to do under one of these so it doesn't damage this and it breaks the vacuum seal. All right, set this aside. Everything is hot, so you want mitts or gloves or something. All right, let's go ahead now.
and everything is really hot um one of the things you may want to do is actually have heat resistant gloves which i don't have so i'm just using my sterile gloves to pull things out and i'm actually wishing i had those gloves right about now <laughs> all right so we have successfully sterilized our equipment. Now, we don't have any plans to use this equipment. We were just running through the process, learning and sharing with y'all. The manual also has a sterilization log, so that way you can keep track of when, whatever you need to be sterilized, how often it's being sterilized, and how long you did it to keep it organized. Awesome, so we appreciate Scott uh, from Practical Preppers for sending this sterilized to us. We appreciate that. Uh, we're gonna put a link down below to his store, so if you're interested in purchasing it, then you can click on the link down below. We also got our pressure canner from them, and I have loved it so far. I highly recommend it. I was very fearful of pressure canning, but have learned a lot just in the past month, and have actually got a little addicted to canning things. Awesome, so we're gonna do a review on that. Uh, hopefully that'll be the next video that actually mm -hmm. comes out. will be that. So thank you guys for watching. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember the right gear and the right training.